Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I will show you how to calculate the Rasi Drishti or the sign aspects. As you know, there are two types of aspects, Graha Drishti, which is the planetary aspects, and the Rasi Drishti, which is the sign-based aspect. This is very important and consists of basic interpretation of the chart. So if you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you would like to be notified about similar videos in the future, please subscribe with the bell notification on. So Rasi Drishti, this is the sign aspect. Rasi means the sign and Drishti means the vision. And this assumes that because of that vision, there is some relationship between the planets. So first thing is the uh, part of the yoga. Why we are studying the aspects? Because they are the part of the yoga. Yoga means relationship between two planets. And this is like a chemistry when the planets have relationship with each other, they create some action, which is then deciphered by astrologers. And we have two types of aspect. One is the uh, planetary aspect, which is called Graha Drishti. Uh, and there are special rules how to calculate them. And there is also the other type of aspect, which is uh, called Rasi Drishti, which we'll be talking today. And this is when this relationship between two planets are based on the signs. So Drishti is one type of relationship between the planets. So there are also other type of relationship like UT, which is two planets being in one sign. This is also called conjunction. There we also have a Parivartana, when the A planet is in the sign B and Lord of the B sign is in the sign A. So they exchange their places. So we have basically the UT, two planets together in one house. We have aspects, which are two types, planetary and sign aspects. And we have also the Parivartana, which is exchange of the planets. So in the interpretation of astrological rules, we need to understand that there are three steps, three steps of interpretation. The first is calculation. We need to understand how something is calculated. And here we understand that uh, the Rasi Drishti, which is the sign aspect, how it is calculated. We need to understand that first. So the second step is metaphysics. We know where are the symbols in the horoscope, in the chart. And then there is the whole astrological philosophy which is connected to that symbols. And we derive the meaning, first the metaphysical meaning, or we could say the abstract meaning. This is the second step. And the first step is related to application. And this we learn through examples. So we understand how this philosophy, how this metaphysical or abstract meaning, which is given by symbols, how this is showing up in our life, how this exactly manifests. And this basically comes with the research, with examples and more with the practice of astrologer. So first is the calculation. We need to understand where the astrological objects are placed. Then we need to understand the derivation, why they are placed in such places. Often this is related to some kind of order. And then this order has some meaning. And from this meaning, we are deriving the, first of all, abstract understanding what's going on. And then we are going to the application, how this abstract patterns astrological patterns, how they are manifesting in our individual, specific, tangible life. The first point about Rasi Drishti, which are the sign aspect, is that they are based on the mobility of the signs. So all 12 signs are divided to three groups based on their mobility. The first group is called Chararashi or movable sign. We have Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn or Mesha, Karka, Tula and Nakra in Sanskrit or Makara. Then the second group is called Stira. We have Taurus, we have Leo, Scorpio and Aquarius. This is the Vrisha, Semha, Vrishtika and Kumba. And the third group, which is called Vishva Bhavarasi. These are the dual signs. And here you have Mituna, uh, Kanya, Danusha and Mina, which is the Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius and Pisces. So basically this, uh, this is related to their mobility, right? Normally we say that the movable sign, the first group has a lot of energy, is moving all the time and it's also very enterprising and courageous. The second part, is with, which is Stira, it's more immovable. So they are more stubborn, they want to be in one place and Vishwa Bhava is something between these two extremes. The second point, all is aspected, is very interesting and it shows that everything which is in that sign aspects the other sign aspected. Because in the sign, they may not be only planets, but there are also other astrological points. We have Arudas, we have Upagrahas, we have Aprakasha Grahas, we have Vishesha uh, points like Pranapada, Hora Lagna, Gatika Lagna, Bhava Lagna. So they are Varnada Lagna. So there are many, many points which can be in the sign. And this is very interesting when we use the Durasi Drishti, then all these points are aspected by this aspect. 
The third point is that per moment relation. So we say that uh, because the graha drishti, the planetary aspect, so the other type of aspect is based on the desire. So sometimes we have desire, sometimes we don't have desire. This is like a mind a bit frivolous. But when we talk about the rasi drishti, because it's like a law of nature, it's like a space, then these relationships are permanent, they say. So this is like a law of nature, which means that there is some relationship between these objects, which is creating some type of situation. We can compare this to Vastu, to this uh, Indian architecture. So by just, by just placement of these objects, this is creating some type of situation, which is permanent and which is like a law of nature. The next point is that it shows external aspects of the significator. So whatever has happened in that relationship, this will relate more to the external interpretation, external aspects, because the graha drishti, it is more related to internal. It's more about our desires. The rasi drishti is all about the physical manifestation and everything which is external. This is also very interesting and it shows that the rasi drishti works so long the object is present in our life. So this is based on, as I said, on the position. This is like a law of nature. So when this object is present, it creates that type of relationship. The next point is that this is used in the determination, the strand of bhavas. So basically the Varahamihira uh, in the Brihat Jataka, he says that the signs which are uh, houses, which are aspected by Jupiter, Mercury or the Lord are stronger. We also learn the same rule in the Jaimini Upadesha Sutras. And uh, in this determination of strength, we are using the Rasi Drishti. So we are seeing which signs between the two. For example, if we want to determine which houses are stronger or signs are stronger, then we are looking which house or which sign is suspected by Jupiter, Mercury or Lord of the sign. And we are using the Rasi Drishti for that. This is used in Narayana Dasha, but not only in Narayana Dasha, there are also other type of Dashas like Chara, uh, Shula and uh, Chakra Dasha, all this Rasi based dashas. The dasha is basically the order of planets, which is giving the sequence of planets or signs in time, which enables the astrologer to uh, place the events which are in the horoscope in the progression of time. So this is the dasha and we have dashas which are based on planets and dashas which are based on signs. So all in this group of sign based dashas, this rasi drishti is very important. This shows basically the access or availability of resources. Point nine is about the yogas which are formed between the planets because this is like a chemistry. When two planets having a relationship, they are creating some effect, which is only restricted to these two planets. For example, there is a Rudra Yoga. Rudra Yoga is when Moon is related to Mars or Venus. This is basically creating, may create some health issues. And we can use the Rasi Drishti for that. So we are seeing if Mars and Venus is aspecting the Moon by Rasi Drishti. Similarly, the Tapashvi Yoga, which is the relationship of Saturn, Venus and Ketu. This is creating the renouncement or austerity. So this also we are using the... Uh, so without the knowledge of Rasi Drishti, we will not be able to understand many yogas in the chart. So this, therefore, it's very, very important to master how they are calculated. And in the last point, we are learning, this is one example how we can use it. For example, if the Lagna Lord, there is the rule, if the Lagna Lord is aspecting the Lagna, the uh, ascendant, Lagna is ascendant, then basically we are very intelligent and we have a strong body. So this is what how we can use that. We can see if the Lagna Lord is aspecting the Lagna if the Ascendant Lord is aspecting by Lagna. And in this rule, we are using the Rasi Drishti or the sign aspect. Okay, so the first rule is that all movable sign are aspecting the fixed sign except the adjacent one, okay? So the Aries, every object which is an Aries, Cancer, Libra or Capricorn will aspect all the uh, elements in the fixed signs, which are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio and Aquarius, except the adjacent one or the closest one. Right. So, for example, let's take this Ketu. Ketu is in Cancer sign. So the Cancer being the movable sign will aspect all stira or all fixed signs except the adjacent. So the adjacent is the Leo. The closest is Leo. So Leo will not aspect the Cancer, but, but all other signs fixed, which are the Aquarius, uh, Taurus and uh, Scorpio, they will aspect this Cancer. So that is the first rule. That was the first rule. The second rule is that the all stira rashis, which is the fixed signs, Taurus, Leo, Scorpion, Aquarius, they will uh, aspect 
all the movable sign except again the adjacent one. So for example Aquarius, which is the fixed Rashi, fixed sign, will aspect the Aries, Cancer and Libra because Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn are the movable signs. So they will be aspected by the fixed Aquarius except again adjacent one, the, the closest one. And the last rule, which is the easiest, is that the dual sign, they are aspecting each other. So Pisces, Gemini, Virgo and Sagittarius, they are aspecting each other. So for example, the Pisces will aspect the Gemini, Virgo and Sagittarius. There is no problem with that. There is no exception, nothing. It's, it's so easy. Okay, guys, so that's all for today. I hope you find this informative and useful. And uh, please hit the like button and uh, subscribe for more and see you in the next one.